Hello and welcome to the Garage Series for Office 365. My name is Jeremy Chapman. Hi, I'm Paul Andrew. So Paul, we've talked a lot on the Garage Series about how you can really work from any device using Office 365, how your files will run with you across your phone and your tablets and your PCs. But really at the core of all this, the enabler of that and security is really your identity and your login. Right, and today we're going to look at three different options that you have for integrating identity with Office 365. It may appear complex to do identity integration, but stay with us for the next 10 minutes and we'll show you how identity is easy. So an exciting, informative show in store, but before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia. True or false, Azure AD Sync allows you to selectively sync AD attributes based on the workload that you are deploying. So stay tuned for the answer at the end of the show. So Paul, there are really three different identity options, right? Right, let's look at the first one. So when we think about it, we have typically an Active Directory or some directory service in place. Now the first option is called Cloud ID, and that's where basically your directory really has nothing to do with the Cloud ID. Usernames as well as the passwords and how they get into the service are completely mastered into the Cloud. That's right. You might use this if you uh, have a very small company. You might be able to edit up to 200 users this way. You might use this if you are piloting Office 365. And you might use this if you have an on-premises directory update project going on. Sometimes these directories can get complex. Right, but in the cases where we want to get our directory to actually talk to Cloud ID, then what do we do? Right, the second model is going to be directory synchronization, okay. where we have a tool that runs on-premises somewhere, connects to your Active Directory, synchronizes changes up to the Cloud. Most of the, our users are going to use this model. And if you want to go beyond this, so in, with Cloud ID, we can do things like synchronize your password hash as well. But if you want to do some specific things around federation, you can also have the authentication authentication occur on premises with your own ADFS servers, right? Right, so federation builds on the sync model where synchronization will take the users and their identities and move them into the cloud. Federation does the password validation on premises. And there's still a few reasons, even though we have password hash synchronization, there's still a few reasons why you'll want to do this. Right, and those reasons are? <laughs> the first of those reasons <laughs> is typically existing technical infrastructure based. For example, if you already have ADFS deployed. The second are technical requirements. If you have a smart card solution, which is configured on-premises and integrated with ADFS, then you're probably going to use Federation. The third are policy requirements. You have a policy for certain work hours uh, or other things that are configured in Active Directory, then you're probably going to need to use Federation for that. Right, and the important thing is that all of these are additive. So even if I start with Cloud ID, if I synchronize my directory later, it will soft match my pre-existing user principal names with the new directory synced user objects, and if I then go ahead and federate after that, that can use all the work I did to synchronize in the second step, so I'm not really losing any work as I go throughout that process. But let's have a look at how all of these three different options are used. Great, so let's get started with Cloud ID. So this is really the easiest thing that we can do in terms of getting users into our Office 365 tenant. Now I've got the dashboard open here. If I click on the Active Users tab, I'll see all the people that are already in my tenant. And to really to add somebody in, I'll just go ahead and give them a name. We'll give this one a name of Series Garage, a very common name. That will give me a display name, and then I will just do SG. And that's going to generate a temporary password and allow me to create that user in the admin account. In this case, we'll get the password back, have it go to our friend Series Garage. That means that I have one extra user in my tenant. Now, what I can do as well is add a list of users. So if I've got a CSV file, I can do a bulk add. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So in my case, I've already got a small list of users. So I'm going to browse to that file. It's called demo g2. And I've got that open here as well so you can have a look at what's in there. So we've got the username, the first and last, all those things that you'd want to add. And when I go ahead and click next, it's going to import those guys straight in. And this is great because it's actually telling me I've got an error in my file. So I've got four in successfully, but one uh, didn't work out. So here we can say the username's not valid. I didn't have any spaces. So it even auto-corrects things for me in that case. So it will tell me of any warnings or errors in that process. So this now gives me users in my tenant with passwords and usernames managed here. So I know that you've got some more in terms of what we can do with synchronizing your Active Directory, right? Yeah, so if you have an on-premises Active Directory, you're probably going to want to synchronize that automatically rather than do the manual import. So let's take a look at that. Um, and here I have a tenant uh, and it has not been set up for synchronization yet, so we're going to go ahead and do that. 
Um, first, we have to uh, activate the directory for synchronization. And uh, there's also some helpful information there about how to go about setting up sync, uh, which we're going to show you right now. Um, before I do the synchronizing of the directory from the on-premises Active Directory to Azure AD that Office 365 uses, we're going to run this ID Fix tool. The ID Fix tool is provided by Microsoft, and uh, it gives you a way of looking at your on-premises Active Directory, looking at the attributes uh, and the users there to make sure that there's no inconsistencies or errors. And I happen to have a directory with lots of inconsistencies and errors. It happens. So, yeah, it does. I mean, directories have been around for a long time, and they get edited for all sorts of reasons. So we can go ahead and actually uh, fix up the majority of those issues that we've got there on premises before we start the synchronization. This is much easier than looking in the error log for synchronization. And right? one of the great things is if I do a fix and I realize I have to roll that back, I can actually roll back various things that didn't fix correctly or maybe I have certain errors from the ID fix tool. That's all reversible as well. Right, absolutely. So here's the Azure Active Directory Sync Services tool. And uh, this tool will connect to your on-premises Active Directory. It's also going to check uh, that I've done set the synchronization up on my tenant. Um, now it's connecting to the on-premises directory, and uh, I can put in multiple forests here. So I'll put in the name of my directory forest, and I can add multiple forests here. I just have one forest, so we'll go ahead with that. If I had multiple forests, the next page will ask me about how to match users between those different forests, which and is And that's necessary. huge, because before this, it was really hard to manage multiple forests with Office 365. Yeah, a lot of extra work and extra tools to do that. I will go ahead and add uh, attribute filtering, which is one of the optional features. And this allows me to say, hey, I'm only going to be using Office 365 Pro Plus. Um, and I can really pare down these attributes that are synchronized from on-premises to the cloud if that's something I want to do. I want to keep the display name here, just because if I don't select display name, uh, users are going to appear with blank names. And it's just a little bit hard to manage. Right. I also need to keep the user location. User location is not required to be synchronized, but you can't give a user a license if you don't have one. Okay. You could set that with PowerShell, or you can go and set right. that in the portal also. So we'll select those, and then it's ready to go. This is going to set up a local SQL database, uh, which will keep a copy of my Active Directory that is about to be synchronized, mm -hmm. keeps that encrypted, and it will check between the Active Directory and the local SQL database so it knows what it needs to sync. I'll also show you this other tool here, which is the synchronization service monitor, so that when we start the synchronization, we can actually watch what it's doing. Um, you can see that it's just finishing the synchronization configuration now. Uh, one thing to point out is uh, this tool is intended to replace DuraSync in the future. We have this existing tool called DuraSync. Right. Um, it is and will continue to be supported by Microsoft. Um, and uh, this new tool, Azure Active Directory Sync, is expected to replace that. So now you've clicked Finish. It's actually kicked off the synchronization, so we're going to see the progress here in this tool, right? Right. So we'll watch that. Uh, so what it's doing now is it's looking at my local Active Directory, mm -hmm. and uh, it's taking a snapshot of that into the SQL Server database. Um, and it actually does a staging version of that before it does the actual production import. Uh, and you can see those uh, tasks are just about done there. Um, I can see it's actually on the last one. So let's go and take a look at our directory in the cloud. And as with directory sync, every three hours it's going to synchronize your local Active Directory with this, with the Office 365 directory, right? That's right. And when you have password synchronization enabled, it's going to do that every two minutes. Uh, because if you okay. change your password, you want to see that much quicker. Right. You can see here my users have been synchronized. It shows synced with Active Directory over on the right. So we're done. We're all set with synchronization. Very good. That's, that's two out of the three scenarios. But even beyond that, if you want to set up federation services, that way we can do things like maybe do a promptless install of Office 365 Pro Plus where it just grabs your credentials. But I'll show you one thing. After we get ADFS set up, what I have the ability to do here is just basically log in with a smart link. Now, in my case, I've got outlook.com slash microsoft.com for my normal company email. And that's going to straight redirect me in, even though I had an in-private browsing window open. So it's not looking at local cookies or any of that. It is just logging me straight in using my ID store right from Internet Explorer. If I go into sites, of course, all of the rest of the Office 365 services are wired up. So I have everything there at my disposal without even needing to type in my username or my password using ADFS. So pretty exciting stuff. We talked about the three different ways to master identity. But before we wrap up, let's have a look at our trivia. True or false, Azure AD Sync allows you to selectively sync AD attributes 
based on the workload that you are deploying. Of course, the answer to the trivia question was true. You can now selectively synchronize just the attributes you want using Azure AD Sync. Yeah, that's going to be way easier now. Right, we've covered a lot of ground. We've talked about Cloud ID, where you master usernames and passwords straight in the cloud. And we know that most of you will probably use directory synchronization with password hash synchronization. And for the more advanced scenarios, you can use ADFS, Active Directory Federation services, to do all of your authentication on-premises with your own ADFS servers. Right, we absolutely understand that there are still scenarios where you'll want to use ADFS. And even beyond that, if you're using ADFS, if you haven't checked out the AD Connect tool or Azure AD Connect tool, you can get ADFS set up even faster now with a wizard-based utility that really walks you through that process, so it doesn't take that long. It's a very cool new tool, uh, and it will run those deployments of DuraSync and ADFS for you. And of course, all this information and more can be found at Microsoft.com slash garage, and you can follow us on Twitter, at Office Garage there. Thank you for watching, and goodbye for now.